Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, another day gone, doesn't time fly? Right, cut to the chase. Do you play the yeah but no but game? When someone says, let's let's go down the stables, let's do something with the horses. It's like, yeah, but I've, my nerves are a bit much today or no, but it's windy. Uh, yeah, but, 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 because I get that a lot so first of all hello everybody welcome to the channel um welcome on replay particularly um i'll repeat that question in a minute when the live audience has has loaded if anybody comes to see i'll repeat it again now do you play the yeah but no but game and you want to know how to stop it because it's so easy it's so easy to stop it but there we are Go on, do something on your horse. Yeah, but I'm always overthinking what might go wrong. That's a popular one. Um, when I hold the, I, I do. I've got a few phone calls to make. Actually, hasn't it been a busy weekend? Oh my god, do I look tired? Yeah. It, oh, let me just adjust that. It's echoing in my ears. Weird. I wish I'd remember that every time. Um, yeah, super, super busy. So. On Thursday, I collected our guest instructors for a archery clinic from Finland. Uh, Mihail and Katarina Cosme. Mihail holds the world record for the fastest amount of arrows shot in a minute. And we got all our regular customers from the horseback archery and delighted to get some uh, members from the BHAA our, our rival organization so that was nice and they're only our rival organization because um, they've got a closed shop so they exclude a lot of people who aren't members of their organization but of course we're very angelic and open to everybody uh, so there we are so uh, yeah it was nice nice to see them nice to meet them actually um, then that went on Friday Saturday no uh, Friday plan Friday preparing Saturday and Sunday doing the clinic. Monday, obviously, watching the Queen's funeral. God bless you. Um, my word, that was emotional. That was so emotional, wasn't it? Uh, but there you are. So that Sunday was uh, Monday was gone. I was determined not to do anything, but I did have to do something. I had to drive our Finnish instructors back to the airport. Uh, then Tuesday, which was yesterday. That's right. I'm 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 lost on the days. Uh, yeah, Tuesday uh, we had a really interesting shoot in the middle of London. So we had took two horses. One of the horses has never been in a studio before. So that was it was it was a dream. He'd never been in a trailer, never been in a studio, um, but it was no problem because he's done loads of other things. Which, uh, yes, I didn't prepare him for a studio, but I prepared him for so many other things um shows photo shoots actors horses horse archery of course jigitovka um that that he just took it so in his stride so if you have got a horse that isn't particularly good with anything untoward i mean you can't you can't put up a shop opening in your arena but by the time you've trained to bouncy balls and footballs and bicycles and push chairs and umbrellas and, <laughs> and everything else you can think of a thousand things in your arena then when the shop awning comes out it's just a th thing number a thousand and one so there we go oh um yeah hello there's uh, 14 people on thank you very much for watching can, can you hear me i'm assuming you can usually the comments are all filled up with we can't hear you when you can't anyway back to the question do you play the yeah but no but game? Um, let's uh, let's go do something on our horses. Yeah, but it's it's windy, it's rainy, uh, it's slippy. And then I'd respond with, they do know how to slip. They live in bloody fields. They know how to slip without necessarily falling over. I do as well. Sometimes I fall over, most of the time I don't. And I've only got two legs. And it's like, yes. But I'm so scared, now I'm trembling and the horse is going to feel that trembling and 
everybody says that fear runs down the reins and so now i feel that i'm subconsciously going to influence the horse and then i turn around and say oh what absolute rubbish um does that mean that you're not cold you know you can't ride if you're cold you can't ride if you've got parkinson's you can't ride if you feel poorly because you might shake oh and uh, yeah but yeah but no but yeah but no but are you guilty of playing the yeah but no but game would you like to know how to make it stop well that's the purpose of this it's real simple it's so simple i, I can't <laughs> so if i was to say to you i'm glad i am saying to you and you can put in your comments your butts if you want uh if I was to say to you, today we're going to go get our horses and do what we do and really enjoy it. Now, on one level, if one particular horse I'm thinking of, beautiful extended trot. It's just a joy when you get on this particular section of the road and you're gliding along and you're like... And you're doing this lovely uppy downy, almost like a, a really calm wave up, down, up, down, and, and you're oh, you're covering ground. You really are. Love that. And uh, I'm going to go out, do what I do, enjoy it. Uh, thinking of another horse, okay, Castiso. He likes to go run around the the ride that we've got here. It's about 20 minutes. And you can get, he's really good. You can get a nice little rolling canter, almost gallop on him. And he doesn't mind going downhill. He's really good at putting himself on the nice soft bits of the track. So actually you can do the whole lot, apart from one little bit of tarmac, you can do the whole lot in a canter. And he's blowing, it's just lovely. Another horse I'm thinking of. (laughs) <laughs> it will Toddo. Toddo's about 106 and one of his legs sticks out at a funny angle so he can't really do anything but he does like to come into the arena there and I'll I'll come in with his his favorite buddy and he used to be the main horse and he'll just do a little bit of roman riding so standing on the two horses so only half my weights on him and we're just going at a trot and he he limps a bit but he he likes it and we'll just go around just for five minutes make him feel included i'm standing on the other one a little bit um and then there's uh the one that is just coming up and what i might do with him what might be fun would be to get my two mountain blocks i like doing this when we're first starting off a horse and uh Get on the right side, get on the left side, get on the right side, get off the left side, get on the right side, get off, get on the left side, get off the right side. Just generally arsing around, you know, um, accidentally on purpose, like just catch his bum with my my foot and just make sure that he's not going to run off. Um, And we'll do it in the north corner, the south corner, the east corner, the west corner, and maybe some carrot stretches and a little bit of a bow. And um, what a good boy. Uh, Or we might do loose schooling with him, which is... I love it. I put up a little jump and round and round and round we go. If you want it to be a little bit more Monty Robertsy, we'll we'll cut it into a cut the arena in half so that it can just do a, a nice circle and you can do that join up thingy, which is always quite a laugh. That's a lot of fun, wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? And wherever you are on your scale whether you're like me just starting off with the mountain block on each side and that's that's where we are or whether you're going into a studio for the first time or whether you're Charlotte de Jardin going into the next Olympic ring I'm not talking about the level of ability I'm talking about the mental attitude of just do what you can do without pushing yourself and if I was to say to you right what we're going to do is we're going to go pick a horse and I'll pick any of those horses we're going to do the thing that we do and I've described to you the things that we do and we're going to enjoy them there we are that's what I just said to you what would be what possible yeah but would there be to say and go and do what you can do and thoroughly enjoy it has anyone got a yeah but for that i can't think of it 
I can think of it if I'm asking you to um, take the next bite size, and you're you know you're not you're not feeling particularly um, like progressing today, or you're you know I'm, I'm not feeling a hundred percent or whatever. Then I could see the yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I'm a bit nervous about my canter transitions, for example. Or if you're just at the stage of getting on and off at the mountain blocks that I just said. Okay, so, um, yeah, but I don't think we're ready to move off yet. I don't think we're ready to, to start walking around the arena yet. But to do what you can do, to do what you can do, surely there's no yeah, but, no, but. Do the thing that you do and enjoy it. I'm going to look at the comments. Excuse me for looking down. Oh, I do the butt game if it's windy as I have a spooky Arabian. Okay, that wasn't quite what I asked. Taking your spooky horse out in the wind is obviously a progression that we must get to. And I could understand you playing the, the butt game, but it's not windy today. So is there a yeah, but, no, but here? Do you get what I mean? Do you get what I mean? I think if you do... How can I make sure I'm getting this across properly? If you do the thing that you do and enjoy it, do the level that you're at and enjoy it, I don't care if I'm getting on and off that mounting block on that particular horse or scooting off on my extended trot on the other particular horse that I'm thinking of. Just, it's just all good fun. It's just all, it's all good fun. So if you're enjoying what you do, and yes, well, we're not going to settle there forever. We, we do intend that, we're going to end up galloping down the beach or or boxing off to a clinic or, or the amount of people I have who on the rider confidence um, for the ultimate rider confidence course. If you would like to join the ultimate rider confidence course, September intake, it'll be around here. It's three months study at home and it's all these mental strategies so that when people say there's nothing wrong with my horse. It's all, all me is up here. I want this change of mindset. That's what that course is for. So I just did a little bit of, of uh, plug in there because initially, if you click on, on that link and you'll go to the page which, which describes the course and has all the testimonials and this and that. So have a look at it because you need to know it exists in case you ever want it or, or know somebody else who does. And if you decide, yeah, I'd like to pursue this further, you then get a phone call with me and we just make sure that we are indeed a good fit. And it's always disappointing when we're, we're not a good fit for some reason. And I have to tell people that they're, they're not going to go on the courses. That's always a bit disappointing. I find that quite difficult, but there you are. Um, anyway, so we have a, f uh, a phone call. And the first question of the phone call I've, I, is... Where would you like to go with this? Where, what would you like to be doing? When, when the course has worked its magic, what would you like to be doing? And overwhelmingly, people say, I just want to get on. <laughs> I just want to get on with it. it. There's nothing wrong with the horse. It's all me. It's all up here. I just want to get on with it without overthinking, without catastrophizing. I can't say that word. Catastrophizing. Yeah. Um, without always thinking about the worst that'll happen, without taking notice of other people's opinions, and da, 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 all these mental things which cats tied up in knots. And overwhelmingly, what people are doing is they're projecting into the future, I will enjoy horse riding when I can be galloping across the beach with the wind in my hair. Or, or, or such like. When actually, as I've just shown now, if you thought I would go out, get my horse and enjoy doing what I do, 
that's enjoying the here and now. We're getting into the world of, of mindfulness here, aren't we? Uh, just enjoying what you do. And I find a lot of people miss out enjoying what they do. We've got some great liveries at the moment. Um, we've got a few liveries here, if anyone needs a livery space. There's a uh, Freddy Horse. And his owners come down, they do a bit of riding, they do a bit of long reining, they're down twice a day sometimes, and they just enjoy it. And it's it, it's just, they have, a, they have a great time. They're just going off around here, they do stuff in the field, they do stuff in, and it's marvellous. I've got another owner who's down and is, is working towards dressage competitions, doing quite well, and is exactly the same in a totally different sphere with a totally different amount of, of um, goals that they want to do. But I love it. It's like you just come down and enjoy your horse. You're completely different. You're not sitting there going, I, I wish I was doing all the stuff they're doing. They're wishing they're doing all the stuff I'm doing. I wish I was um, doing A, B or C that I'm not doing. The way to stop the yeah but no but game is simply to do what you do and enjoy it. And that's it. And that's it. So let's see if anyone's got any... Shall I split it into two questions? Yeah, why not? Right then, get your typing fingers ready. Let's have some audience participation here. Think of one of your horses, or your horse. Write down the thing that you'd do if you were joining me today and saying, right, yes, I'm going to go off. I'm going to do the thing that I do. So, but work, mind you, there's some kind of work, because it's quite often the thing that we do is just <laughs> go, go and blow up our horse's nose and go oochie coochie coo. A um, bit more than that. So some, somewhere on the progression line, what, what would you do? What would you do? If I said you're going to do it, I've given you f four, four examples. So I'm going to pick one now. Let me just think of this horse. Okay, I got him. Uh, yeah, I'd bring Teak down and I'd work on his lead, changing, changing his leading leg in canter. Because when you get it right, it's a joy. And you do get it right. You do get it right. And we'll do some bowing and we'll sort out his rears. And that's, yeah, that's what I do. There's no, there's no excessive, um, well, no, there's, there's progress, but it's not like, like bravery progress. Obviously, I'm going to consolidate what I already do with this horse. That's what, that's what I'm doing with mine. I'm consolidating what I already do. And, and Teak, Teak is the most wonderful, big, black, Frisian, he can do lovely lavards, he can do great big rears, he can do lovely bows, and he is a bit crap at going on his right leg lead in canter. But he can do it, little cheeky monkey he is. Yeah, that's what I do. Let's get out and enjoy our horses. What would you do? And if there is a yeah but no but coming, Go on then, stick that in as well, because I don't think if you're consolidating on the thing that you can already do, I don't think there can be a yeah, but, no, but. Can there? If you can already do a lovely extended trot and you're just going to go and consolidate on that lovely extended trot, then that is such a tiny bite size. It's like getting a horse responsive. At the end of at the end of the year, we we spend quite a bit of time tuning our horses up. We call it. I don't know if you call it tuning your horses up. Um, I suppose it, uh, we just mean school and getting getting them responsive. Because I quite like it when you want a horse to do a b or c if you if you're going along and you want to go from your walk you go along the road you want to go from your walk into this lovely extended trot and i'd quite like it to be now 
and I could go out and quite easily do that today and thoroughly enjoy it. The bite size that I'm doing is on the progress level, but it's so small, it's not going to bother me at all. What all I'm wanting is a bit of response so that straight away he's into this extended trot without doing that annoying just chuck his head in the air before he settles down on the, on the bit let's just get him straight in onto the bit and a uh, nice soft contact and scooting along and we could make that real smooth real smooth that's not the biggest bite size in the world but my god if we did that for a few weeks We'd have such a responsive horse tuned up to to just be absolute dream. Let's have a look at what you've written. Has anybody has anybody more responses in our transition? Look, Lelling Cooks reads my mind. You read my mind. Isn't it great? I love being in my horse's company, even not doing I can't ride my horse, she's low back fellow. It's a shame she's only three. I love her to bits. Never able to ride her, but her nature is amazing. There's so many things you can do without riding them. I mean, old, old Toddo there, <laughs> we'll never ride him again. And, um, but there's so many things you can do. I, I often hold up a... Uh, I went to see Spirit of the Horse, which wasn't that good a show, actually. I was very disappointed because I'd seen the title, Spirit of the Horse, and that was the best thing about that show. It was such a good title. I reckon that title made that show. But when you got there, it was just a horse a horse circus um, with different, I, I was expecting something more theatrical and to be filled with the joy and spirit of the horse and come out feeling horsey from head to toe. And I just saw low backs. However, the acts were jolly good, so I'm being unnecessarily harsh. And as a horse circus, it was it was marvellous. Trick riding was great. And there was a little act there called Rosie and Scout. And Scout, <laughs> it was great. Scout was this little black and white cob thing. And uh, they did this whole act. You must have seen this act where they put the horse to bed and you pull the blanket over the horse and the horse pulls the blanket back again and you pull the blanket over the horse and pulls it back again and then when it's time to get up the horse won't get up and you're pushing the horse and it won't get up and you get hold of its tail and you wind its tail and it still won't get up and um, sometimes that act go, goes on to eventually you just kneel down by the bed and pray and then the spotlights come on and a chorus of angels goes ah and the horse gets up and uh, yeah, that was great. It was, it was the best act. It was the best act. But my point is, there was no riding in that act. But you could tell there was years and years and years of trust, uh, training, partnership, everything that you want out of that time with your horse. And I'm not saying that you have to go on into shows or whatever. There's there's plenty of people do work with their horses and thoroughly enjoy them so i'm sorry if you can't ride your horse but my god loads of people get a lot of joy out of their horses without riding them um some work in other ways of course you've got driving well i started off pulling trees out the woods so i didn't ride a horse for seven years after after getting them he just used to have draft horses um yeah, these old boys doing ploughing matches, they don't get on them at all. And uh, up in the fells, we were we had a, a prize winning herd and it was all about the breeding. Never never got on them at all. And and the joy that they had in, in these horses, which were semi wild. My point is that you don't you don't have to ride a horse to join in this question. Do what you do with your horse. But anyway, I expect most people aren't riding them, so let's have a little look. I'd work on my walk to trot transitions. My horse is lazy. And my yeah, but moment is what if he bucks when I try to push him on? What if he, what if he bucks when you try to push him on?
Is he going to bat? And you try to push him on. Is this a real thing? Well, now we're in, into the problem-solving thing, which wasn't wasn't the point. It wasn't the point of this. Yes, you can have a yeah, but doing the thing that you do I've, I've, I've not described what I'm trying to say. There is no yeah, but if you're doing the thing that you do. He doesn't do the walk to trot transitions very nicely because you're worried that he's, that he's bucking. So you can't honestly say, yes, that's the thing that I do, Carl. That's the thing that I do because it's obviously not. This is at the cliff edge of what you do and it's the thing you're working on. And don't get me wrong, that's absolutely fine. But if you're, if you're just at, at walk then there's loads of things you can do at walk. I mean, there's there's a whole load of the working equitation exercises, going through gates and over obstacles and this and that. That's all at walk or, or sand. And uh, if he's if he's at that point where he's a bit young and fresh, I, I, I think I know what you mean. I've, I've got horses, it's kind of like we're getting through these transitions and they get all excited because they think that something's coming up and maybe they're young, maybe they're stupid, maybe they're green, maybe they're one of these evergreens. But that's, be, I'm, I'm not talking about being at the edge of the thing. This is all um, being at the edge of what you can possibly do at part 100%. I'm talking, what, what's the 60%? What, what are the things that you can do? So if I was to say, go and do the thing you can do, you just said you can't do your walk shot transitions very nicely or very confidently. So that's not what you can do. That's what you're working on and what you will be able to do. But I wonder what, I wonder if I said, come on, let's go and do what we can do. What we'd do. Or maybe I've misunderstood. If I have misunderstood, you'll have to put another comment in, won't you? <laughs> I'm just trail riding. For a start off, there's nothing cool like just trail riding. Trail riding, we, uh, this is from uh, a fellow instructor in natural horsemanship. And she says, or she did say, she said, so it, she says loads of stuff really eloquently. Oh, look. You can't do this now, I'm doing a broadcast. You're live, you're live now, so don't swear. Bye. You'll have to text me. Well, that doesn't happen on Good Morning Britain. <laughs> there we are. Oh no, I forgot what I was saying. It was really good. Oh yeah, I was saying, yeah, just trail riding. Trail riding's as complex as any other discipline. Some may say even more so. We train for dressage, we train for uh, eventing, we train for jumping, we train for schooling. And then somehow some people go, we'll just go on a hack or go on a trail ride. We, we train for tra trail riding. So uh, we train for trail riding. So if that's what you do, if, if you're quite happy trail riding, then uh, that's what you do. And yeah, there might be a few yeah butts in trail riding, depending on what time of a day you go and where you choose to go. There we are. This is great. Thanks for all these comments. I'm loving this. Is this all making sense, by the way? If we were to go out and do what we do, do what we do, not what we're working on, but what we've got. If we were to go out and work and, and do the thing that we're at our 60% of, for myself, I've, I've described, if you've only just joined us, I'll describe it again. I love going on an extended trot. And it's like, boom, let's go on an extended trot. That's, that's all we're doing. Well within my capacity, thoroughly enjoying it. And there's no yeah, but no, but there. Just having a good time at what I can do with this particular horse that I've got in mind. Anyway, there you go. I would do the circle game and trot around me as I walk centre line for Macy. I, Zoe, I've no idea what you're talking about, but it's how I, I can picture it from your description already. I've not come across that. So there we are. Backing up in a straight line. Lovely. And uh, 
I I quite like backing up. It's it's very useful for getting past scary things. So when people say, oh, no, I can't reverse a horse, it's like, oh, my God, you're really missing out on a trick. When you go out, going along, and then there's a bloody dead badger or something, and they're like, Bleh! dead badger, and they don't want to go past it. If, if, if you just turn around, say you're facing at home, and... And before they know it, they're past the dead badger. It's such a useful, useful thing to do. There we are. There we are. Use, I use that loads to get past things. There we are. Do what you can do and improve it. Nice one. Nice one. Uh, going off subject a bit here. There we are, more trail riding. Teaching the boy to lay down, Debs. Nice. It is, it is, it's really good. We're both having fun with this. And this is, this is the point. This is the point of what we're saying. We need to have fun with it. There we go. Uh, Marie Wallin, but you don't get forward if you just do the same. It, it it depends. Part of part of moving forward, I think people. That's a great question, Marie. That's a great question. I'm going to put it up there. <laughs> can I can I show that? Oh. Yeah. I I am absolute absolutely right. I'm with you a hundred percent. That what I'm not. I'm always talking about bite sizes, but I need to make the distinction that it's bite-sized progressions. Bite-sized progressions. But I think people are still not aware of how small the bite sizes I do are. I would consider... Let's just talk about this extended trot a bit. I would consider going out and doing what I do. Let's say going out on a lovely extended trot. The most I'm doing today, doing what I do, is I just like to get it a bit more responsive. That when I ask, boom, he's straight into it. And I don't want to do a little uncomfortable bobbing around um, just while I find the rhythm. I want to get thrown up into into my first rise and we're already off at this beautiful extended trot and uh, just being responsive being on the button I like all that sort of stuff so my bite size could easily be I'm going to consolidate that for two weeks for two weeks we're going to go out and we're going to do that until that is in the bag I keep telling a story about when I was learning to Roman ride. Roman ride is standing on the two horses. And it <laughs> it was quite difficult, to be fair. And of course, I started off, stood on two chairs, sorting out how to, how to gather up the reins and such like. Um, just tied the bridles up on a wall and, and, and that. Then I was at stand. Then I got Zana to help me and she'd lead round one horse and the other one fortunately would keep up. Um, and it took, it took about six months and there was a lot of falling off, a lot of falling through the fence. Um, I only fell onto the pommels of the saddles once, but that, that did put me off a bit. <laughs> the whole, lots of turning round, lots of horses stopping, lots of, of pulling in, and there we are. But anyway, we got round at a pretty rough sort of trot. I got the gist of that, and of course, I, then I was scared of, of going into canter. And my solution was to do what I could do, and we're kind of back on the subject, which is quite interesting, um, just do what I could do for a winter. So I'd get up at, I'd get up at six, run straight down to the stables, 
even if it was just 10 minutes, tack them up as fast as I could, jump on, scoot round at this trot until it was time to get back in time for my breakfast and to go to work. And I just did that until I was smooth at trot. So that's pretty similar to what you were saying, Marie. Um, I just did that over and over again until I was smooth at trot and then the trot gradually became more and more of an extended trot where uh, I used to have this little phrase called scoot on because it, it felt like they were scooting like that when they were extended trot and I'd be like scoot on scoot on scoot on and um, eventually the outside one which always uh, which all, when you get to the curve of the arena the outside one tends to drop down and you have to say scoot on a bit more and it scoot on it just do on the corners it just do a few a few strides of canter and gradually one le <laughs> one leg got used to the str and uh, stride of canter and then gradually you built it up and built it up and it still took another another couple of years to get confident at canter um, but there you go, there you go. And I still tell the story that, I, and, and since then, my Roman riding, it's been, it's been on all the posters, uh, going from Roman riding two to Roman riding four isn't, isn't that hard. Well, it is, but it, it, it's nothing like going from not being able to Roman ride to Roman ride two. Roman ride, by the way, is, is standing on the backs of two horses. And, um, that investment in that time of I was doing the same thing Marie you're absolutely right but I did get forward because I consolidated it I just made it more and more familiar more and more expertise and since I invested that time which was 12 years ago now and I have used that time which was 12 years ago I persisted for six months and it's and it's paid dividends over and over and over and over and over again it, and uh, I've got those memories forever I've got the photos forever I, I've got the skill forever and uh, yeah it, it was really good so I'm gonna ask a question back to you then Marie was that not progressing and just doing the same no i can't say it wasn't progressing because each time it got easier and easier can't honestly say that it wasn't progressing in fact it was you wouldn't have noticed as the person watching me you might have if you'd have lived around that livery yard, you might have looked out every day and go, oh, bloody hell, there he is going again. Just trotting round, trotting round, trotting round for six months. He's never going to be Lorenzo. And whatever other people's opinion you might have liked to have said. But yeah, that was what I mean by incremental bite sizes. And you may feel that you're not getting anywhere. But you are because you're getting more and more comfortable, more and more easy, and you are progressing. Interstitched with that is the bit we were talking about earlier. Um, someone, who was it said about the, I've lost it, uh, the trot transitions without the horse backing. Well, that's where we have to, to kind of like, okay, we're going to work on that. How can I work on that, given that the horse might buck? Um, then we have to think, what's my plan? What am I going to do to make sure that the, 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 the fear of what I'm doing, if you want to deal with a fear, you have to be aware that your, the panic center, your primitive mind that responds with fight and flight and panic and freezing and everything else has the processing power of a seven year old. So whatever you are going to do to get your confidence through those transitions, just imagine what seven year old you could cope with. And that might even be getting someone else to lead him through the transitions first until you've convinced your seven year old, look, they're being really quite forceful on that horse and it's not bucking at all chances are it's going to be all right for me and then you're just talking about dealing with an imaginary fear or you may have got it right and it might be a right arse and it's like okay I put my instructor on and oh my god it bucked I'm glad that wasn't me 
and in which case you'd be right. So maybe paying an instructor to show you is a, a wise investment of 70 quid. So, so then you could move on be, because you had to do that for your seven-year-old or long reining it and just doing the transitions into trot where you can tap it on the bum with the the with the whip to like get on there's your insistence and when you insist on on your horse going forwards you then see while you're in a safe space maybe it's it's your decision how to plan this out you plan it out as an adult using your intellectual mind and taking into account that your emotional mind will be working as a seven-year-old but yeah so you're quite right Marie we don't just do the same thing we do make our plans how to go on and uh, and there we are we move on but yeah doing the same thing for a month or two or six months in my case doing the same thing for a period of time is part of the progression if you do it and that's my question. What would you do? What would you do? <laughs> Lovely. For anyone who's just joined, the question is, if I was to say to you, come on, let's go do what we do. Not what we're working on. Do what we do. Whether that's, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just at the level of walking or I'm just at the level of, of um, starting to sit on my new horse for the first time or I'm just at the level of going into my first competition or I'm just at the level of doing my first ditch or I'm just doing my level of doing my first hunt whatever it is what do you do and what would you what would you do if I said we're going to we're going to do what we do the thing that we do with ease and we're going to enjoy it because if you just go and enjoy your horse then the yeah but no but doesn't happen you just go and enjoy what you do and my question is what would you do if I was saying today your lesson today is to go get your horse and enjoy what you do what would you do not overcoming nerves not overcome not working on something that you don't do or that you're gonna do enjoying what you do do <gasps> I said do do <laughs> Right, let's get get rid of this. I've I've lost it. How, oh, Marie, your comments there forever. How do I how do I how do I take that off? Oh, there you are. Let's just bob that off there. So, if you're out on your horse, enjoying the thing that you do, without thinking, oh, I must work on the thing I don't do, the thing I'm working on, the, the transition that I'm on. If you simply enjoy your horse, you will find that your expectations and your disappointment disappear. And your nerves disappear. If you simply enjoy the thing that you're doing. If your expectations are there, Okay, I can do my extended trot. My expectation is to be galloping on the beach. And I'm doing extended trot that I've been doing for the last two months. I'm still no nearer to getting on the beach. Well, you are secretly because you're getting more and more confident in your extended trot. But your, your, your expectations wouldn't help you to see that. Your expectations would be of what you're not doing, what you should be doing. I've had this horse six months now and I'm not doing what Dave's doing. If your expectations go up, your enjoyment will go down because of what you're not doing. And then when I say, come on, let's go and enjoy our horse, it's like, oh no, I, ha I, have, to, I have to work on my, my canter transitions because I, I'm, I'm going. Yes, you do have to work on your canter transitions because you're going to the beach. But you also need to enjoy what you do. After all, we have them for fun. Horses are fun. We have fun. That's it. And we spend a lot of money on them. I don't know how much money you spend on them, but I spend loads of money on mine. So sometimes, a lot of times, you have to drop your expectations and simply enjoy what you do. And then you won't have to play the yeah but no but game. 
Okay, last look through the comments. If you haven't put a comment in yet as to if I was to say, let's go and do what we do, not what we're working on. Let's go and do what we do and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Do what we do and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Get in the comments and bob down now, because I'm going to go in a minute, what we'd be doing. I'm just going to have a quick look at them. What are we doing? Oh. Oh, scoot down to the bottom there. Thank you all. Thank you all for your comments, by the way. Hacking out, walking out, fun things, hoof care, attention to balance. Nice. Nice. Fun for us is targeting Max and fetching a big rubber toy. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you're watching on replay, don't let that put you off not putting a comment in. Put a comment in of what you do, working in your capacity. Look at the beautiful weather. We're all going out. We're going to do what we do on our horses. If I said to you, what are you going to do? And you have to thoroughly enjoy it to the point where the yeah, buts, no, buts don't even come into it. Not including having a cup of tea and blowing up its nose, like like doing something with it. Not necessarily riding. Plenty of people don't ride. What would you do? If you would like to join the September intake of the Ultimate Rider Confidence course, there is a link round here. Check it out anyway. If you think it might be for you, it might help. It's study at home, online, three months with all the mental strategies that you need because so many people say it's not even my horse it's me it's up here so check that out i'll put the link down in the description there's also links to my hypnosis that they're, they're all offers as well um so links here to my hypnosis enjoy your horse uh, my hypnosis ride like you dream of my book there's free stuff as well so have a little look around my free copy of bolting bucking and rearing i can send that to you uh, there's so much stuff so all all the links are in the description around this video and um yeah let's get going thanks for listening don't forget to put your comments in cheers everybody